continuing with our pirate propaganda poster, it's time to throw on some text. Now, um, when it comes to text, we're going to have a pretty wide variety of fonts available to us, depending on um, what you may or may not have downloaded. I often spend some time collecting fonts. I have, uh, for the past several years, built up a collection. Um, so most of these are, uh, are free fonts, and you can find a number of uh, free font websites where you can um, put together your collection. So I'm going to want my text right around here. And um, so I'm using this font that I downloaded. And rather than take a line directly from the play and potentially t uh, take someone else's intellectual property, I'm going to uh, come up with my own phrasing um, rather than something like pirates are people too, which is the line from the song. Um, Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Pirates have real feelings. It's uh, getting the same point across. Um, now, I have been using this font already, but let's pretend um, that uh, we don't like it and then we want to change it after we've put it in. So I'm going to, um, while I still have my, my text uh, tool selected, I can uh, make a couple of changes. So let's say um, I want it left justified. I don't. I actually want it center justified. Um, let me see if I can find another font that I like as much. And I don't know that I will. I think that the uh, cheap potatoes black may be the one I'm going to go with. But what I really like about Photoshop, unlike some other um, applications, is it as you scroll through it, you can see... Yep, cheap potato is, is the way to go. Um, you can see in real time what that font looks like. And I want I don't want anything that's kind of uh, outlined like this. I want a, a nice, chunky font, um, maybe. Yeah, it's not doing the same thing for me. Um, so uh, this is one of my more recent fonts. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Um, but I think I want to increase the size. Now, with this particular font, um, it may need a little bit of coaxing. Rather than use the, the auto spacing, I'm going to plug that in myself. Now, of course, it doesn't fit entirely in the heart. And that's OK, because um, I know something you don't. I'm actually going to change this heart in just a moment. Um, but it's relatively nicely placed. Um, but I still want a little bit more separation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the little FX icon, and I'm going to scroll down to a drop shadow. And unfortunately, um, it looks like it's using the exact same settings that I previously used. So I'm going to just throw them off a little bit so that I can dial in the settings I want. Um, I tend to like a little bit more opacity for my drop shadows. Uh, I don't like this uh, this spread. So I'm going to decrease my distance. And I want um, this particular font, I know, um, if I were to spread it larger and then increase my size, it's got a harder edge than if I were to reduce my spread and keep the size. It tends to uh, have a feathered edge. And I want slightly feathered maybe right around there reduce the distance a little bit more and I think I'm uh, happy with that I'm gonna increase my opacity just a little bit uh, and just a little bit more distance because I want to get that I don't like how it's spreading so much over the top I want it more underneath the text I'm happy with that uh, it seems pretty heavy but I'm gonna be splitting this heart in half so I'm gonna have a little bit of this paper showing through um, so I want to make sure that I have enough separation from the background all right um, so speaking of let's go ahead and uh, work on this next section what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna drag this layer down here to the new layer and it's gonna make a copy I'm going to turn off my copy for now and again still not using my pen tool or uh, my, my uh, my pen on my, my tablet. 
I'm going to take this lasso tool and I'm going to tear this heart up. And I've made that selection. And I know right now that I don't love the way that looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit um, my Alt key and take a way a little bit of that selection to make it look a little bit more jagged. Um, now, it's not looking quite as jagged, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the feathering on that quite a bit. Let's take that down to 10. And then you may or may not have similar settings. Because Photoshop does a pretty good job of keeping um, your previous settings that you've been working with. And so I think I'm happy with that. Now, if you look over here, I've got the blue and red. The black and white are not selected because I am right here. I'm on this layer, but I'm not on the mask. I'm on the actual workspace. So what I want to do is I want to click on this layer, the one that's not hidden, and click on the layer mask. It'll then turn black and white, and I'm going to hit Command Backspace or Delete. And there I've gone, and I've torn my heart. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect, so those little marching ants get torn away. And so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to select the layer, and I can click this tool up here, or you remember hitting the key shortcut V. Move it, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command T so I can transform it a little bit more, because I want the heart to be kind of be pulled away like that. Now, I didn't have a great view of it um, when it was behind the text. So now looking at it, I realize that I want, I still like that feathered edge, but I want to uh, select a little bit more, hit my lasso tool or hit um, L for lasso. And now that I have got it placed better, I can find where I want it, that edge to be jagged. Click on the layer mask again, command delete. And that's a little bit more appealing so now I'm going to do my other side of the heart and going to hit my command T. Oops. What you don't see right now is that my cat is on my desk right in front of my layers. And he's so kindly just turned his head away so that I can see with the layers again. All right. Um, so I want to put a little bit of an angle there. I don't want it snapping quite to 15 degrees. And I'm trying to imagine what it looks like without the section here. And I think I'm fairly happy with that. I don't want it to be symmetrical exactly, but I want it to have some sense of balance. Okay, so there's the other side of the heart. And now I can put a little bit more time and try to make it look... Um, a little bit more uh, like it's torn, but I actually want there to be some pieces in the center. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to tear away a little bit more of the heart here on this side than you would think if, you know, that part was torn up, there should be a little bit more over there. And go make sure I go to my layer mask and command D. And I think I want tear away even more. I'm just going to move my layer mask over a little bit and command D. There we go. So what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to go back in here, create a new lasso. And I'm going to have some shreds in here. All right. Instead of hitting option this time, I'm going to hit my shift key and I'm going to add to that selection. Essentially what I'm just doing is I'm doing a couple little chunks that have kind of been torn away. I still have that feathered edge. Normally if I wanted something a little bit more um, specific or like a little bit more detail, I'd get rid of that feathered edge. But I, I actually want to keep more of it so that it looks like it's kind of tissue that's being torn. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. A little bit more. 
connectivity to what was there. Or here. Now I know that I don't, my heart that I just moved doesn't extend all the way over here, but let's see how much of it I can get. And this, actually, I'm going to reduce my feather quite a bit because I'm not sure if you saw that last little selection. It's, it was nothing like um, what I traced out. All right, let's see what this looks like. Remember, I have my background layer is white, or my background color is white. So I'm going to command delete. I made a little bit of a mistake there. So I can take out that white right there. So this is the white that's showing in, if you remember our taking off the mask, that's what it actually looks like without the mask. And one more time. There we go. And I'm fairly happy with that. Now lastly, I, I'm kind of really liking what's going on with this uh, drop shadow. And I'm feeling that maybe I want the drop shadow on the heart as well. So I'm going to go to my FX drop shadow there. However, it is way too much. I'm going to reduce it quite a bit. Actually, this font, remember if I want it to be a little bit more feathered, and I think I do, but I'm going to reduce the size quite a bit right there. And there we go. And then hit OK. And all my settings are going to be identical with this one. And just a little bit of a drop shadow there. Um, you may want to turn it on and off and see, do I really want that? Yeah, I'm feeling that drop shadow. Now, the main thing that I'm having issues with is there's so much light, um, lighter tone, or um, what we would call value on the outside. I mean, it's darker here, but I just really kind of want to center our focus a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one last layer. I'm going to put it over the paper layer. Uh, I hit FX. I don't want FX. So I want to add uh, a, an adjustment layer. And I'm going to pick, you can do levels or curves, or exposure. I like brightness and contrast for this because I like it to be nice and quick. I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to up my contrast. I like that. And then I'm going to turn it um, into a layer mask. So I'm going to get my ellipses. And I'm going to find right about where center is and drag out. But if I hit my option, it's going to center. It, rather than work from a corner, it's going to work from the center of the object. Now, if I need to reposition it, I can hit, hit my uh, my space at the same time. I'm still holding Option and hitting Space, and I'm finding the center a little bit more. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my background color, which is black, and delete that. Command Delete. OK. One more time. Command Delete. There we go. And so I've created myself this really awful vignette. Um, now, depending on how you've configured your, your palettes, you may have your properties right here, or you may not. So I'm going to fine tune some of the properties of this layer mask. And I'm just going to push my feather a lot. 